What's going on, beautiful people of YouTube? It's Ringing Bane. Welcome to a very special episode of Life of a Game Hunter slash Collector. Not only is this the 100th entry into the series, I just hit 15,000 subscribers, a number that I'm extremely grateful for. Couple that with the fact that tomorrow is my birthday. All the stars just kind of aligned up for me to want to make this video. So I'm not going to do any repairs or talk about things that I picked up or sold in this episode. I'm going to answer the most asked questions that I get all the time in the YouTube comments. At the end of the episode, I got a few packages that came in, some trades and some business that I'm doing for a handful of people, so make sure to check that out. So, if you were ever curious about a lot of these uh, questions that you're going to see, sit back and relax. I'm going to answer them. guys i said it in the beginning but i'm going to say it one more time because it really is from the heart i could not be more grateful for the fact that this channel has reached 15,000 subscribers and continues to grow that's incredible i actually never thought this channel would do that well and the fact that it's still rising is very heartwarming and it makes me want to continue making these videos and putting out content for you guys out there so starting off with some of these questions, they're not going to be in any real particular order, but I get these comments all the time and, and rather than just going through each individual comment and leaving the same answers each time, which I try to do for the most part, as a lot of people know, I at least read every single comment and for the most part, I respond to each comment if I can. Um, that's, you know, I try my best to acknowledge everybody that watches this channel sometimes i can miss comments that's just the way it works as this channel grows it gets harder and harder to do so but i do try to read every comment that's out there all right so the first question and this one i've seen quite a few times and that is am i selling the game collection my game collection specifically obviously no i'm, I'm not going to there there's no way that i could get rid of every single game that i own however i have downsized my collection not considerably but quite a bit there's a handful of things that i've just kind of you know kind of weeded out it's not so much that i i don't want to collect everything that i that i can it's the fact that i just don't have the room for it there's so many more things collecting wise that i would much rather have versus something that is really just sitting there i, I made a video a while back talking about the types of collectors you got people that collect things you know only that they will play which i still think is kind of a moot point considering if you got 400 games you're not going through all 400 of those games you may get to them at some point but you can kind of see where i'm getting at i've always liked the idea of if someone was to recommend a game for me hey have you ever heard about such and such game on the ps2 and i can say i have it i haven't tried it i always have that opportunity it's nice to have this kind of rental store in my house to where i can come in here and pick out a game i may have never tried and try it now of course there's games in here i'll never you know get get around to playing but I'm kind of getting to the point now with collecting to where I'm I'm wanting to condense it down to games that I know I'm going to play, games that are good, and games that just aren't that terrible. And it, it's kind of weird weird to explain, but here's a good example. I recently got rid of Incantation for the Super Nintendo. It's a sought-after high-end game. Uh, it's not a great game. It's it's not fun to play. It, it's it, terrible controls. Looks great, but it's just... In a sense, it's not a good game. Why would I want that game when I think I sold that game for 130 bucks? I could take that money and put it towards three or four games that I know I'm going to play, that I know are that are good. Or you know, if I wanted to get another high end game, I can get one that's 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 good to play, that's fun to play, versus having a bad game. I would much rather have good games. So that's kind of what I'm doing. You know, I've condensed down the PS2 collection quite a bit. I'm a fan of the PS2. There's a lot of, you know, exclusives on there that I like to that I like to play or want to get around to playing. But there's a bunch of games in there that I, I will never play. So I kind of toned that down. This game room, as a lot of people see in, in the intro, it's a lot bigger than that now. It's, it's grown exponentially. And it's getting real hard to place things. So I need to tone certain parts of it down in order to get the things that I really want. All right, so this next question, I, I get this one all the time, and honestly, I it's I, I hate this question. It's kind of a dumb question to me, and that is, how much did I pay for my game room, for my collection? And I, it's 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 easy to, to, to say for me, I didn't pay anything, but a lot of people can't really wrap their heads around that. 
sure, there's going to be that initial investment. Let's say we can go back 10 years. I've been collecting for on and off of 10 years real seriously about the last six or seven years. Uh, but let's say it started with my first lot. I was at a flea market, a yard sale. I have no idea. Had $20 and I get a beautiful lot, Super Nintendo lot, N64 lot, whatever it may have been. And I keep what I want and I sell the rest. I make that money that I spent and then I use that profit to buy another lot. And it just kind of snowballs from there. Sure, there's things in this collection that I have paid out of pocket for. But every other lot, this game has to be like this game room has to be at least like 80% lots and those lots pay for everything else. It's a hard concept for people to grasp because I know that there's people out there that pay out of pocket to people like me that resell games to build their collections. But I hunt, I go to yard sales, I go to flea markets. There's no possible way in hell that I could have paid for this game room out of pocket. If anything, this game room not only was free, it has made me a tremendous amount of money on top of that just by buying and reselling games. This next question I see all the time in the YouTube comments. It's a good follow-up to the last one, and that is, how much is this game room actually worth? If I was to sell everything, what could I get for it? You're going to hate this answer because, honestly, I have no idea. I've never calculated everything in my room i've never been one of those types of people i know there's people out there that anything they get they immediately want to know all oh, this is worth this much this adds this much value to my game room early on i kind of wish that i kept you know a spreadsheet and a database of all the things that i picked that would make it very easy while i'm hunting nowadays to look on my phone and say oh i am missing this for my collection or that's one that i'm looking for versus you know picking up a game uh for the second time not realizing i already had it in my collection I've always told people, uh, you know, some close friends, if they, you know, kind of want to know the value of the game room, and the way that I look at it is, is it's a very simplistic way of, way of looking at it. I got close to 5,000 games, and that's going down. I want to get comfortably around like 4,000 and be right at it, uh, but let's just assume every single game was worth a dollar. There you go. That's $4,000, $5,000. Um, obviously, that's not the case. I got, you know, many high-end games. Uh, there's no telling what an average game is let's say all games are three dollars so multiply you know three and fifteen that's fifteen thousand um, dollars and then all the systems i got 40 consoles or so um i have no idea if anybody wants to take a guess on how much my game is worth feel free to do so in the comments it's not about the money i honestly you know people say oh you know you look at it you know as a value why not you know honestly if i broke my leg or got in a car wreck tomorrow and my insurance ain't going to cover it you best believe i'm going to sell the shit out of this game room and cover myself you know before you ever see me make like a, a gofundme page or anything for something you'll see me sell this game room first for anything that i gotta do um it's not a bad perspective on it obviously i never want to sell this game room i never want to get rid of it. i always got to have some attachment to uh the nostalgia that retro games bring me uh, but again, I've never looked at it specifically as, oh, this is worth this, this, this is worth this. I have this game room because the simple fact that I love games. Another follow-up question to that one would be, what are my goals for collecting? What am I actually trying to achieve? Well, like I was talking about in that one video, you know, the different types of collectors, um, I considered myself more of an everything collector. If I didn't have it, I wanted it. Again, I like that idea of coming into my own rental store and picking out something I've never tried to experience it. Um, as I'm running out of room and getting older, I'm, I'm condensing down to the fact that it's just games that not, not necessarily I will get to play. Um, it's games that if I do, I would actually enjoy that game. So I'm getting rid of a lot of filler games, a lot of games that I know that are very known to be bad games, things like that. And collecting more for things that I want there there's things like my Super Nintendo collection um I want that to be a good collection of of good titles I don't want it to be a bad collection um I don't want a bunch of terrible games in there um original Xbox I would love going for a full set that and the N64 would probably be about the only uh maybe Master System the only sets that I would ever really want to go for a full set on um the N64 collection a bunch of terrible games on that system i love it i have a lot of respect for the n64 it's very nostalgic for me but a lot of people have to admit it's got a lot of terrible games on that console the main reason that i'm going for it is i'm close to it already i'm i don't know two-thirds three-quarters of the way already there um so you know you get that that long into it it's nice to finish it now who knows whenever i do finish it i might condense that down i have no idea 
Um, collecting goals for me, it doesn't necessarily change all the time, but it does seem to be evolving into something different nowadays. And there's certain things that I don't think I could ever get rid of, like terrible Wii titles. That's one of them, one of my pet peeves of collecting. I love finding cheap, crappy Wii games. Uh, you know, I love looking at the covers. I, I try these games out. I'm like, oh, these are awful games. I don't know why. It's just the type of collector that I am. Same with a bunch of other systems in here. Um, the biggest example I can say of condensing is I've condensed down a lot of more modern stuff. I actually don't own that many Xbox One or PS4 games at all on, on actual physical copy. My 360, my PS3 collection, that is going down because I can find those games so cheap. And again, I'll probably collect them in the future, maybe five, ten years from now. But now I just I don't see much of a point in collecting them. I'm not going for those sets. All those games I have played many times before. And I can find those games, uh, you know, pretty easily and very cheap. You know, when they get a little bit more sought after, I'll probably get, you know, back into it for that nostalgic feeling however so long down the road. Here's a question that I get all the time, and a lot of people don't understand this one because I guess they live in a little bit more privileged of an area. And that is, where are the live videos? Where are my hunting videos at? And if you don't know already, I'm on the eastern coast of the United States. It's very seasonal. If you don't like the weather, close your eyes for 10 minutes and you'll see something different. Um, it's very rainy this time of month. I actually got rained out yesterday for Saturday. My yard sales, flea market videos uh, really start to come about every week uh, or every other week, usually about the end of May. So until then, we might get an episode or two out uh, between here and there, but it's always usually raining. Uh, when that rain does, you know, April showers really hurt everybody around here for hunting videos. Um, they haven't stopped. It's just this time of year, you know, at the end of, uh, you know, October or so, they, they slow down drastically and they don't really start up full swing until about the end of May. So that's when you should expect to see them all the time. If you look at statistics, you know, whether it's like on Social Blade or not, you can kind of see that trend on how, how it goes. Another question I get asked all the time is, what do I do for a living? Do I, you know, live at home with my parents or something? No, I'm happily married to a beautiful, wonderful woman that I've been with for a very long time. Uh, she's very supportive of everything that I do. She knows if I go out and spend a thousand dollars on a lot, she knows I'm going to bring home a lot more than that. Um, I resell. I don't just resell video games. Everybody thinks that I do. They think that all I sell is video games and consoles, and I work on that couldn't be further from the truth if i did that that's maybe a, a sixth a, a seventh of my uh, actual inventory of what i do i resell anything that i can turn a profit on um anything at yard sales flea market thrift stores that sort of thing a lot of people think that i only sell on ebay and that is not the truth i sell on many platforms you know uh, i sell a lot local facebook let go offer up I've sold on Amazon. I don't sell there that much. Uh, a lot of it is through eBay, but a, a good majority of it is through local listings or local sales or private Instagram sales. A lot of people private message me. I have a lot of repeat customers um, whenever I pick something up or you know they just randomly ask if I have this, and I do. Um, I do a lot of refurb work for people. You know whether it's consoles or to repair things. You know if if I know how to do it, I'll I'll do it. If I don't, I'll try and they won't get charged. Things like that. When it comes to eBay, a lot of people don't realize I actually have two stores. Uh, the one that you see in the descriptions is, you know, I like to put stuff on that store that you see in my live pickup videos or just some random things. My other store is a little bit more structured. They do equally about as well, uh, but it's good to have one that nobody knows about whenever you have a social stance as I do. Another question I get is, do I have kids? And uh, not that I know of. I, you know, joking aside, I don't have kids. I don't plan on having kids. You know, I always joke with people, you know, I'd rather have a game room, but that's, you know, that's a stupid thing to say. There's plenty of awesome parents out there that have a game room that have kids. Um, I just don't ever see myself having kids. I don't have anything against them. It's just the fact that I'm a kid at heart. I would never, it, it sounds selfish, it sounds greedy, but I just, I, I, don't, I don't want that responsibility of having children. Uh, me and my wife have talked about it. She doesn't want to have kids. Uh, this is just the way that, that we've planned our lives and things can change, I'm sure. But as, as of right now, no kids. Don't really plan on having them to all the parents out there. Um, you know, that, that is awesome. I respect that completely. Uh, it's just not for me. A question I've seen a handful of times, not, not as often, but it is why did I start my YouTube channel? Why do I do what I do? Um, th this will, this will sound weird to a lot of people. I actually didn't used to be into, ooh, I got something flying around my head. 
Um, it didn't used to be a retro gaming channel. I actually am a musician. I play guitar. I you know play piano. Play a handful of instruments. That's kind of what it started out. And the channel didn't do anything musically wise. Whenever it was originally what it was, the original name of it. Um, you know, I had you know a hundred or so subscribers, uh, and that was awesome. I liked making music, but I kind of not necessarily got out of music or got out of of making music or playing or whatever it may be. Um, it just, I didn't like making videos on that. So I stopped for a long time. I, I never did anything with it. And, um, I would watch so many YouTube channels. Uh, you know, I, I used, you know, the, the channels that I used to watch back in the day, you know, like, you know, CJR, I, I loved watching his, and so I like watching people and I still like watching people that show actual finds that show the, the meat and potatoes of a fine you know they don't show themselves digging in a box they don't go into retro stores uh you know I, I like people that go to yard sales and flea markets things like that and he had a big influence on my channel starting out originally uh there was a handful of others uh I, the flashiness i don't like a lot of flashy you know youtubers i don't i don't like the uh you know over, overly edited you know sort of things um and I would see some YouTubers out there that they, they would make these yard sale videos, these hunting videos, and it would be, they, they would pick something up, you know, and that, 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 would, that would be it. You wouldn't hear any commentary. You wouldn't hear why they picked it up. Hell, you wouldn't even hear what they paid for. They just showed you that they picked it up. And I'd get so annoyed with that. And I still kind of get annoyed with that. And I thought to myself, I was like, man, people need to know why you would pick this game up or, or you know, you know, haggling techniques just you know just teach these people and that's that's kind of how i started doing it i said honey i want to get a pair of glasses and i want to go out and i want to make these videos so i shopped around for for spy glasses i actually before i actually made my first real live video um i tried three or four different spy glasses I, i'm cheap so i ordered like a 20 dollar pair uh from china they have terrible quality i didn't want that for this channel and I would, uh, you know, send them back. I'd spend another 20 bucks. I've, you know, got some $40 glasses, $50 glasses. And finally, I looked up and I was like, what are the best, but not, you know, superly outrageous, expensive, you know, everything that I needed for what I wanted to do. And I found these glasses called Pivot Head Durango's 1080p. They do a fantastic job. And, you know, you could tell by the live footage now. And, you know, I don't have a GoPro strapped to my chest. Anytime you have a camera in front of somebody, if someone has, is in the presence of a camera, they act differently. They don't treat you the same as if you were a normal person. At least with the glasses, I look like an idiot, uh, but they don't suspect a thing. So it's it's real raw footage of finds, and that's what I set out to do. Not only that, I like to couple it with the commentary of why I picked this game up and just kind of teach people. And I get comments all the time of people saying, you know, this channel's helped me out tremendously with you know the insight and learning on how to game hunt and what to look out for so whenever i put out those live videos early on they did extremely well a lot of people gravitated towards them over other you know hunters that i saw out there and i think it was a symbol that I, I was showing these people i was teaching them and i was showing nothing but finds that's that's one thing that i've always made as a standpoint whenever i make my live videos and that's to show the finds i don't show filler there's no need for that the, the live hunting videos is, is simply that it's hunting i'm not going to or if i go to a retro store you know it's because i'm getting a crazy deal or just an amazing steal that's just the way it is um you know when i'm going to yard sales and flea markets you don't want to see me go to a yard sale and not get anything you don't want to see me go to a retail store and pay retail price for a game it just that's not the type of videos that i make some people can do really well with that and they make great content but for me that's not how it works and i think that's why a lot of people really enjoy my hunting series so this final question i get all the time and I, I just i don't answer it for the fact that it's not the most safe for work story but i figure this is going to be the time that i have to answer a lot of people want to know where the origin of the name ring bean comes from i can't answer this question without going into some backstory behind it um 10 years ago maybe more than that um, I used to work at a car wash. I was just a basic attendant, worked my way up, started detailing that sort of thing. And it was a crazy cast of characters up there. I mean, we were, it, they, they should have really made a movie about a car wash. You ever seen the movie, uh, you know, waiting just like that, but with a car wash scenario, uh, you know, everybody would, you know, we'd smoke left-handed cigarettes before cars pulled up, things like that. Amazing experience. And, um, 
the the, the cast of characters. Man. We had this one old fat dude, man. We called him Fats. That was his name. That was literally like what people called him. Like, you know, if he had a name tag, it would say Fats. And uh, he had this really weird voice, you know, ooh, that now, you know, he'd sit on this bench like this right here, you know, he didn't give a damn about what people thought. And uh, there was another, the reason why I say this is not you know, the most safe for work story is the other dude, let's say he was a connoisseur in the fine arts of selling things, um, and he also worked at a car wash, so I'll say it like that. And I had a buddy of mine, you know, we're still friends to this day, and his name's Deemer, and uh, this dude would call him Dean Team. And he would always see us together, and he'd say, Dean Team and Reem. I don't know why he chose that. I, you know, my what people call me, you know, outside of the, the YouTube community is, is Reno. That's 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 my last name. That is uh, what I prefer to be called by by people. And I, you know, I guess he, he took you know Reno, and then Dean, he, you can see where it formulated together. But that's that's the backstory of. There's nothing crazy to it, and it just kind of always stuck. And whenever I converted my channel to, to, you know, the retro gaming community, I was like, I need a different name. I need something that that's catchy, that that's easy to remember, you know, a nickname in a sense. And I thought of that name and I'm, I'm glad I chose it. It's unique. Uh, I get irritated as can be if ever I'm watching something and someone says it wrong that they, they say Renee Bean. Um, but I can understand, I guess, you know, the way it looks. I always say, you know, it's like Green Bean, I guess, you know, the way it is. Uh, but that is the origin of the name Rean Bean. If you ever wondered if it was from an old connoisseur in the arts of selling, <laughs> just, just an old nickname. And that's where it started. But this video was fun to make. It, it, it was, you know, fun making, you know, the answers to all these questions. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to switch over and I'm going to show you those packages that came in. I actually filmed that a few days back, but I figured we'd put it all together in this one video. So with that said, guys... Let's head over. Uh, let's head to right where I'm sitting and open up the rest of the, the or open up those packages that came in. All right, guys. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that episode. Like I said, I got three packages here to go through. Uh, we will start off here with uh, a Miss Ashley. This was something they uh, she reached out to me on Discord server. I told you know some people that I was looking for some N64 games. She said she had one and she sold me this one. Uh, which I'm very happy to add to my collection. I used to have the most fun with this uh, when it came out with my brothers. This was an amazing game. And thank you for the deal on this one. Uh, check this out, guys. This is a good one. Vigilante 8, Second Offense. Very happy to add this to the collection. Uh, Miss Ashley, thank you for that, for helping me add another game to the collection. I'm still going for that full set. I got quite a ways to go, but uh, every game helps, and I appreciate the deal you gave me on it. Uh, next up here, we got a package from a Mr. Steven Reed right here. This is one of my buddies. He's actually one of the admins on uh, the Discord server. Very helpful guy. Very knowledgeable person. And he is one of the people that me and him go back and forth on trades. If I get something from one of my lots, he'll say, hey, I need that. Vice versa. And we just kind of go back and forth. This was part of a trade right here. This is another game that I am very eager to play and get back. Or This one I've never played, uh, but I'm very eager to try it. And I needed this for the original Xbox. A lot of people know I'm a big fan of the original Xbox. I'm, you know, that's one of the collections that I like to actively seek out. And this is Panzer Dragoon Orda. And for whatever reason, this game has eluded me for the longest time. And I finally got it. And I have recently been playing through Panzer Dragoon 1 and 2 for the Saturn. Very challenging games. And I'm very excited to see how this looks on the original Xbox. Man, it looks fantastic. Super excited about that. And another game for part of our trade was Afterburner for the 32X. There's not that many 32X games. How many is it? Like Maybe like 37 or something like that. Uh, here's another one that may be another set that I can complete. There's not many sets when it comes to collecting that I know I can complete. But there's a few that I think I might you know get close to. That's very cool. Mr. Steven, thank you so much. I actually got two of his games over here. That's part of the trade. I think I got uh, Super Metroid and... I mean, like Shadowgate for the N64. Um, I just, you know, I build the stuff up, and then when he says send it, I'll send everything his way. But he keeps track of the trades on his end. I can completely trust this person. He's always gave me a good deal. We don't trade beforehand, but he's able to keep up with everything. All right, next package here, which is one that I'm not familiar with. This is from Lunar Effect. The, the name sounds familiar, but I. I'm just having a tough time remembering it. it. sounds like, I mean, it feels like a, a stiff big package. I'm not entirely sure what it is, uh, but we're going to find out. Lunar Effect, why is that name eluding me? Um, usually I'm, I'm okay with names, but I guess for this one I am not. 
Uh, we're gonna find out. I'm not exactly sure what's in here. Uh, this is a deceptive priority mailbox in a package, which I completely condone. That doesn't bother me at all. You ship it safe, ship it cheap. <laughs> There's a note here, which I do want to read before I pull it out. It'll probably give me a reminder. Uh, so this says, open me first. And he's got, what is that, like a little Seymour guy right there at the bottom. <laughs> Very cool. All right. All right, let's see. Let's, let's, let's keep watching. All right. Hey there, Ring Bean. Salutations all the way from Bipolar, California. Or well, at least where I'm from, at least, as he says. Where it can be sunny 73 to 73 or to, to three days later. Raining cats and dogs. Uh, also, it, it's okay if you don't recognize the name. I only comment on some videos here and there. See, that's what I'm saying. I, I remember seeing the name maybe, but it's just my memory, guys. Uh, so don't hurt your brain trying to remember the name. Uh, anyways, I had some free time and I painted this little gift for you. I hope you like, wow. I uh, hope you like my little Picasso painting. I also wanted to say thank you so much for making your videos. Truly from the bottom of my heart, I am a little young bean <laughs> just starting my collection. God, you guys get me all crazy here. Uh, mainly getting all the games I had before my mom sold them at yard sale. Oh, wow. And I'm sitting here talking. Or I'm actually just before this been making a video on how to sell things at a yard sale, but for good prices. Uh, thank you for motivating, motivating my lazy ass to get up at 6 a.m. to hit up swap meets. But mostly, thank you for making me laugh and smile with your funny ass jokes. When I see the not notification that you posted a new video, I cannot be quick enough to click and watch it. Keep on sh uh, shekeling. Uh, oh man, I'm going to try to pronounce it. Mar Mariella? Maybe? Mariella. Possibly. Or Lun Lunar Effects a lot easier. AKA Little Bean. That is, that is classic, man. Uh, let's see here. P.S. If, if it's not too much to ask, if you happen to come across a copy of Link to the Past and Mega Man X Calling Dibs, absolutely. I come across those games fairly often. I think I just came across a, a Zelda uh, uh, Link to the Past uh, not too long. But those, those go very quick. If you ever see me get one of those in my pickups, message me instantly on Instagram. Let me know. Uh, those two games were my first games that I played on SNES. I don't know what the hell I was doing when I was playing Link to the Past, but I loved it regardless. My spoiled ass cousin o owned them, and he would never let me borrow them. I was lucky enough that he even let me play them at all. Hopefully when I own them, I'm going to get my little brother to try and play Mega Man and feel the pain of time a lot. Man, this is a very awesome, awesome letter. And I, I want to say Mariella, maybe. I'm probably... Lunar Effect, thank you. Oh, uh, let's... This, this is, that's heartwarming, man. Very little bean. Ha! All right, let's see... Let's see the painting. Oh, goodness. You know, I had one person a long time ago send a package of, of something they drew at work of me. I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, that someone would do something like that. They're even telling what this is. Be cool if it's like Zelda or something. You never know. All right, let's see. He, he got this thing very nicely, you know, protected here. What in the world? Wow. <laughs> Holy smokes. This. <laughs> wow, man. That, that is just truly cool. This is. <laughs> All right, guys. Are you ready to see this? This is cool, man. This is this is this has been very awesome to see. Look. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It's got look, look the kids got the, the little the, the little middle finger. I'm surprised people can actually see that. Oh man, the old logo that is very that is very awesome. So with this picture, I'm gonna have to tell you a little bit of backstory on this picture. A lot of people always want to know, and I figure, what better time? The, the I don't know. The baby doesn't really mean anything. Um, I always thought he was just funny as hell, and I always picture I'd be like, man, he, he just imagine if he was flipping the world off and putting you know like like a uh, like a westerner mustache on him, and I did. And, uh, I don't know, like, he just kind of represented the channel. Because I don't give a damn, you know, what people think of me or what I do. You know, if you're a reseller online or whatever it is, you're already going to get flack regardless. Um, I did change the logo recently to, you know, a pixelated picture of myself. Um, but I'll always remember this. And this is, this is truly special. Thank you so much for that, Lunar Effect. This is going to be hung up 
in the wall of accomplishments really uh to have someone that that would do that for me is that's remarkable <laughs> thank you so much for that and uh on that note guys i'm going to end this video so to everybody else out in this wonderful world take care and enjoy the rest of your day Thank you.